coming up on the form. Yeah, you mentioned the other night you guys had the best home record. You told us there you'd be back in L.A. for a game six. What has to happen for you guys to get it back here again? And uh, how confident are you that you can pull that off? Yeah, we got to um, come with the right, you know, edge and uh, the right road mentality. But, um, you know, I said it out there and I'll say it again. You know, we're, we're going to be back for a game seven in front of the best fans in the NBA. Uh, we just uh, haven't put together two performances together. But, you know, we still have put three uh, team efforts together to be a 3-2. And that's what's most important. It's not about, um, you know, what AD and myself are doing. It's about how we can win basketball games. And tonight I was shit. Um, and I'll be better in game six. They say it's usually calm before the storm strikes. The Memphis Grizzlies have forced a game six against our Los Angeles Lakers. Through it all, we've seen it all. But there's levels to this. The Memphis Grizzlies are back to talking. In the end, LeBron James has seen it all. This is nothing new for him. Being up 3-2 and a possible closeout game tonight, game six at the Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles. Game five was little to be desired. But Memphis came out and punched us right in the face. A big run in the third quarter fueled the Memphis Grizzlies win over the Los Angeles Lakers. As it may look like right now, where is the level of confidence? It's calm before the storm. Grab your umbrellas. You may need them tonight. Take cover. Because the storm is coming. The Memphis Grizzlies are coming in to force a game seven. But tonight is our game seven. Laker Nation, wear your purple and gold loud and proud tonight. There's levels to becoming a champion. The path taken is not easy. There's bumps and bruises along the way. But tonight, the storm will come and it will rain down on the Memphis Grizzlies. Laker Nation, you know the vibes. Tonight, game six, Los Angeles Lakers versus the Memphis Grizzlies. It's time to put these kids to bed. It's time to close this series out. The sooner we get this over with, the better we'll feel. Send them back to Memphis crying with their with their luggage and suit and their Kleenexes and suitcases. It's time to shut them up once and for all. Laker Nation, Lake Show, let's go. Good morning, Laker Nation. Good morning, good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to another edition of 
the form of Los Angeles Lakers podcast right here on the Grid Sports Network. Dare to be different. Step into the grid. The new leaders in digital media, sports, and entertainment. My name is Patrick L. Brown. I am your host of this beautiful podcast. And I like to say welcome if you're a first-time listener. We have ourselves a series, ladies and gentlemen. We have a series. Man, I will dive into that here shortly. Want to get a few things out of the way. Be sure that you subscribe to The Grid on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you may listen to your podcasts. And also, check us out on YouTube. The channel is growing You do not want to miss any of the exclusive content that is coming from our creators. Dare to be different, step into the grid. If you're tired of the same old biased takes, this is the channel for you because we are unbiased and we give you different perspectives on each take in the world of sports and entertainment. But tonight, you know what time it is. Game six. Lakers, Grizzlies, our Lakers are up 3-2 in this best of seven series. It's now the best of two over the next two games. It is going to be an all-out heavyweight bout tonight. And I mean that with the with the humble opinion and with everything that's in within the ounce of my body. Little be little to be desired in game. Five, AD had a good night. LeBron had a very off night. We're going to dive into today's episode because that third quarter run that Memphis put on us, that I'm going to start there because that was the turning point of the game with about five minutes left to go in the third quarter. LeBron's mindset going into game six. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a lot to say about that. A lot. Desmond Bain's comments on a possible game seven. Here we go again. I'll touch on that as well. And give you my game six preview. For what's going to be an epic heavyweight bout. In the form and analogy of boxing. But first. I was really pissed off. After I watched the highlights of the Lakers game on Wednesday night. Little to be desired. The third quarter is where this game got away real quick. It was a single digit lead. With about five minutes left to go in the third quarter. Memphis. Those baby bears. Those cubs. They went on a 28-8 run. In the third quarter until the fourth. I'll be doggone. Where was the effort? Where was the energy? Coach Darvin Ham didn't even bother to call a timeout, if I'm not mistaken. That is one thing as a coach. You have to stop the doggone bleeding for crying out loud. LeBron was exhausted after playing 40-plus minutes in the overtime game on Monday night in a 22-point, 20-rebound performance. AD showed up, gave a double-double. But it was the others who did not answer the call. Coach Ham, his rotations looks good, and then some nights he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. As a basketball fan, it irks me when coaches don't know simple rotations and lineups to use. It's confusing. I kept saying on Monday and previous episodes, Desmond Bain is the best player on the floor for the Memphis Grizzlies. Do I need to... Elaborate on that a little bit more. I will. 
Desmond Bain is the best player on the floor for the Memphis Grizzlies. Hopefully, you heard me loud and clear that time. It's really aggravating. If I know that guy is getting buckets anywhere he wants on the court, play physical with him. Play physical with him. It's not complicated. As a basketball player back in my heyday when I had good knees and ankles, I would I would have gotten physical with my opponent. I wanted to guard I wanted to guard the best player on the floor. You can take one player, give me the, I want the challenge. Nobody on this Lakers roster that's on the floor regardless of what of ro- what rotation it is has stepped up to the plate and met Desmond Bain to be physical. If we're going to win this series and win this game tonight, it comes down to physicality and slowing down Desmond Bain. Get a body in front of him. Do not let him get to his shots. I know I sound angry in my voice, but it's very, I'm at the point of pissivity with this with the Lakers defense right now. There's levels to this. Yes, we have a 38-year-old LeBron James who's still playing at a supreme level. But by golly, George, somebody on that roster and that rotation has got to get in front of Desmond Bate and slow him down. Phil Handy is the one of the assistants who knows defense. Why haven't we figured this out yet? Why? You take away John ja Morant. Desmond Bain, you know, he's a scrub. He's all talk. Jaron Jackson is the is the defensive player of the year. And him and Xavier Tillman are out rebounding this for crying out loud. Really? AD got the rebounds. But we're not aggressive. Why? 94 feet. Attack them. Attack them before they get into their half-court sets. Do not let them get in transition. Get back on defense. Basketball is not a complicated sport to play, ladies and gentlemen. A six-year-old, my six-year-old nephew could figure that out. Six! And he already knows the simple necessities of playing basketball. I tell him, I said, nephew... Games are won on the defensive side of the ball. Offense can win you games, but if you want to go for it all, damn it, it takes defense. You got to have it. I don't care if you can score over 100 points. I want defensive stops. Even if that means somebody sacrificing their shots for the betterment of the team to take away one Desmond Bain. Ja's going to get his. But you force him to be a jump shooter. Do not let him attack the rim. Meet him there. Take a charge. Get back to the fundamentals of winning basketball games, Laker Nation. Lakers, please. To honest to John, please. Eliminate Desmond Bain. Take away the catalyst. Somebody other than 12... 22 and 13 beat us. Simple. You don't need bulletin board material. You see the film, you're out there on the court. If I was a head coach, I probably wouldn't have a job right now. I'm I'm just being honest. I am being very honest. I remember a time when the late great Kobe Bryant chewed out guys in practice because they wasn't getting back on defense. As great as Kobe was, he pissed off a lot of teammates. He had that MJ in him. I'm not willing, I'm not going to do something that I'm not willing to ask my teammates. Somebody needs to be the voice of reason in that locker room. If I got to motivate you every night to go out and play, you don't need to be a Laker. I don't care who you are. Whether if you're a starter or a rotational player. 
Simple, y'all. Very simple. Tonight, we're going to see what this team is made of. Tonight is a game seven for the Lakers. Heaven forbid if the Memphis Grizzlies do force a game seven on Sunday, all bets are off. As much as I love LeBron, James, been my favorite basketball player since he came into the league. I tell you what, his demeanor right now and his mindset is very calm. That's a scary sight for the baby bears. It's funny that when they lost games three and four, nobody wanted to talk. You win game five, now we're talking about, oh, we're going to bring it back to Memphis for game seven. Hell, you ain't even played game six yet and you're already looking ahead. That's a bad sign. A very bad sign, Memphis. Laker Nation, we don't need bulletin board material for that. The Memphis Grizzlies have done so much talking, I just want to shut them up tonight. Literally. Verbally. Psychologically. Hit them where it hurts. Jump out all over them in the first half and don't stop. Just because you build a lead, hold on to it. Make them quit. That's what they're trying to make us do. They won in game seven. They're going to come in tonight and try to kick our ass regardless. They've got that mentality. They're not afraid. But the way they like to talk, I'm going to give you this analogy that my late grandfather once told me. Pops, rest in power, rest in peace, and rest in heaven. I know you're looking down on me. He once said, the loudest person in the room is the one that's scared. But the one who's off in a corner, silent observant, is the one you want to be aware of. The Memphis Grizzlies have walked into the room. They let everybody know they're here. While the Lakers were just off and out in the corner chilling. Like, yep, keep, keep talking. You want to be seen. You want to be heard. But there's levels to this. I've gotten to a point with this team that I don't care what it takes. Go out there and win. We win together. We lose together. But now is not the time to fold because the Memphis Grizzlies are talking. We can chill. But tonight, there's no time to chill. What I mean by that is we can't get into this complacent mindset. We'll just do enough to get by. You have to go out and you have to want it from the time that the game starts, the opening tip. You can't sit and wait until midway through the third quarter, fourth quarter when the game is tied and you want to put them away. You can't do that against a team like Memphis with young legs. They've been doing a whole lot of talking, but we've got to shut them up once and for all. Remind them they are light years away from being a champion. Their arrogance and cockiness is eventually going to catch up with them. It's going to happen. When? We don't know. But as a veteran-led team, we've been here. LeBron James has been here. He's even killed right now. He's not panicking because of what transpired on Wednesday night. Yeah, you heard him say in his post-game comments that he, that he played like shit. And he's going to be better game six. One thing people fail to forget, LeBron James does not play two games back-to-back -back where he's had a bad night. Last time I checked, he didn't. That's his mindset. The strongest part of his body is his mind, his IQ. This is a measuring stick game going into this game six tonight. You may say, it's not the regular season. Backs against the wall. The media is ready to write headlines tonight and over the weekend for all the talk, sports talk shows to say, well, the Lakers couldn't get it done. They were, they were lucky enough to get into the play-in, but they couldn't get past the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't know if I'll be able to stomach that after tonight. Tonight, 
this team has to put all hands on deck and go out there and bust ass and take notes. Plain and simple. You punch them in the mouth early and you keep punching them. You don't give them a glimmer of hope to get back in this series. If you get them where you want them on the ropes, you got them. Don't let up. It's going to be a heavyweight fight tonight. The last man standing will either win this series or we'll be playing the game seven Sunday afternoon or evening in Memphis, Tennessee, back at the FedEx Forum, just the way Memphis scripted it out. I could care less, but tonight is game seven. Lakers, approach it like that. Do whatever's necessary. Lock in mentally. AD, hold up. Please hold up. Be aggressive. Austin Reeves, find your shot. We've got to knock down shots. If it's not falling from the three, don't keep jacking them up. Get to the rim. Get to the paint. Or make them go. Just do what you got to do. Do not keep jacking up threes and giving them every window of opportunity to get back in it. You can't do that against Memphis. Take away Desmond Bain. Let Ja get his, but you got to be physical with him. 94 feet. 94 feet from start to finish. That's what it's going to take to win this game. Physicality. Wear them down. Let them get aggravated, get underneath their own skin. Let Dylan the Villain Brooks get pissed off and thinking he's really pounding his chest and he's not. But it all starts with Desmond Bain, Lakers. Eliminate him. Make him work. Box out on Jaron Jackson Jr. Crash the boards. Get out and run. Beat them at their own game. Quit playing checkers. Play chess for, God, for crying out loud. Basketball is not complicated. It's not complicated at all. We've got to get back to the fundamentals. And by golly, Coach Ham, if they start running, getting up, getting, getting ahead of steam, call a timeout. Regroup. Stop the bleeding. Don't let them keep slicing us and dicing us. I think the player that would be up for the assignment for this particular game, Ruby Hachimera on Desmond Bain. you got to give him different looks. you got to bless him defensively. Would I love to see LeBron on Desmond Bain when it's in clutch time? Yes. LeBron should say, I want, I want Desmond Bain. Let me have him. We've got to blitz the Grizzlies. It's got to be an avalanche. Open up a can of whoop ass and get this series over with. Let the storm clouds unravel on the Memphis Grizzlies. It's very calm right now. But after tonight, if there is a game seven, rest assured, I am going to be ready to unleash. Tonight is a game seven. But we have to play a game seven on Sunday. Rest assured. I will be well rested. I will have more energy in me. Energy in me. I am going to probably do some some more episodes for this for at least through the weekend. That is my plan right now, unless something changes. But tonight, we've got to slow down Desmond. Bane. Moving on into the Oh Lord have mercy. Sorry about that. I had to get that off my chest, but Laker Nation, I just want you to know that I am very passionate just like the rest of you. LeBron's mindset. Said so just touch on this briefly before we transition into Desmond Bain's comments. Tonight is LeBron's, some would, some would say a legacy game. It feels like a legacy game for LeBron. But as you've seen, he's been very calm. Cool, calm, collected. 
Like, yep, I've been here before. I've been on the other opposite side. They he feels their edge and their energy and going into tonight, and that is a very dangerous sight for the Memphis Grizzlies. What I love about LeBron James, out of any other basketball player that I that I enjoy watching outside of Giannis, is that LeBron is very calm. He doesn't get row- rowdy with the media. He's very cordial, but when he's on the court, he does his talking. I would not be surprised if tonight LeBron has one of those retro performances that we've seen in the past. When he's in a closeout game, he averages better than 35 points, 8 rebounds, 9 assists. A triple-double. Tonight is a game where he and AD are going to have to at least give us 75 points. At least. We've got to get AD going early. And for the sake of argument, Jarrett Vanderbilt, getting him go early is a must. I like what I've seen out of that, that, that combination. But I need guys, if their shot's not falling, be aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. Do what you got to do. Just 94 feet. I keep saying that. 94 feet. I believe that's going to be the key to victory. It's 94 feet. LeBron knows this. He's been in a lot of playoff games over, over the course of his career. He's seen it all. There's not one scheme that LeBron has not seen throughout his career. But we do know that at age 38, LeBron James can only do so much. The others, as Shaq says, the others have got to show up tonight. We cannot let Memphis, the Memphis Grizzlies role players outscore ours. We've got to be aggressive, and I think it starts with LeBron James setting the tone early along with AD. His mindset tonight, I ain't got no worries. I'm going to go out and do what I have to do. If I got to play 40 plus minutes, so be it. I got to do what I got to do to make to get my team to the to the finish line and close out this series. The sooner we get this series over with, the better we'll feel mentally and physically. Because we don't know what's going to happen between the Sacramento Kings and the Golden State Warriors in their game six. We don't know. What we do, excuse me, what we do know is our Lakers have to focus on one game, one quarter, one possession at a time. Communicate. Execute. Play smart. Don't don't turn the basketball over. LeBron is going to set the tone early. That is his mindset tonight. Come out, be aggressive. Give the Memphis Grizzlies a reason to quit. And keep making quit and force them to quit while making them quit. It's time to put these kids in timeout. It's time to put them to bed. It's time to make them go night night until 2024. I'm done listening to the Memphis Grizzlies talk about what they're going to do. I'm done talking. I'm done hearing them talk. Because that's all they seem to be is talk. The loudest person in the room is the one that's scared. The one who's quiet is the one you got to look out for. That's the one you should be aware of. When they ain't saying nothing, they just looking at everybody being loud. And then, boom! You're, they run up on you. And next thing you know, you on the ground. I didn't want to do it. But I did. And I'll live with the results. That's the mindset LeBron has tonight. He's the leader. AD's the co-star. The mindset. Physicality. Whatever it takes. That's the mindset LeBron's going into tonight. Moving on into Desmond Bain's comments that he made about forcing a game, possible game seven. That's the arrogance and the confidence of of a young team at the same time. They act like they've been here before. 
for a team that has had shortcomings. For me, it tells me that you think you are all that, but you haven't been there. Remember when they were down 3-1 to Golden State last year and their rally cry uh, whoop that trick was playing? Yeah, they beat the Warriors, but the Warriors being the veteran team that they were, they reminded them in Game 6 that they are not on their level just yet. I think tonight the Memphis Grizzlies are going to meet their, they're going to meet a match. The old saying goes, don't write a check that you can't cash. That's what the Memphis Grizzlies had just pretty much did. They wrote a check that they, they, they won't be able to cash. You hear the confidence, but there's arrogance behind it. Yes, he's one of the leaders of the team, but at the same time, your team is a mirror image of their coach and their leader. What's crazy is, and maybe I'm just blind to a team that really is talk, is that when you say those things, it puts a bigger target on your team's back. The media is heaping you praise. Everybody's dogging LeBron and how old he is. And, and LeBron's just sitting in the cut chilling. Like, yep. Y'all must have forgot who I am. I've been on this is not my first rodeo. The Memphis Grizzlies are going back to the forest tonight. One can only hope that that happens. I honestly believe that the Grizzlies are due for a bad game. They're writing all these checks that they can't cash. There's not enough funds in the account to, you know, cash the check. Going to end up in the negative. Wise man learns what a fool never will. If you're a great player, you can talk that talk. But if you've never won in the trenches, in the mud, you ain't got a room to talk. Experience is the greatest teacher of them all. You can't prepare yourself as a young team for this magnitude of a game in which you're about to play tonight. It'd be different if the Grizzlies were veterans, you know, eight, nine years in, and they're still trying to break through. They're in the beginning phases of that, but there's levels to this. You may have John Moran, who's an electrifying player, the most exciting player in the league right now. Desmond Bain is a solid player. He kind of reminds me of the guy that isn't really known, but he does a lot of his effort behind the scenes nobody sees. But when you get up to the podium and say, well, we're we're going the distance. We're 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 going to for, we're going to come back here for a game 7 to the best fans in the NBA. Confidence and arrogance at the same time. I think it's more 75% arrogance and 25% confidence. They won a game seven. But are they ready and mentally prepared for a game seven? You're going up against the arguably the second greatest player that ever played the game of basketball. You're going to try to beat him in a seven game series? How many teams within the last decade or so can say that they beat LeBron James in the playoff series? Outside of the NBA Finals. How many teams to say they beat LeBron in seven game series in the playoffs? Not very many. You go back to the pre-Cleveland days when he was, you know, third and fourth year. 2005, six, before he finally broke through and beat the Detroit Pistons in 2007 in a series that nobody would have ever thought would happen that LeBron would take over in the Gang five in the fourth quarter. That was the that LeBron arrived. And since then he's mentally prepared for this. He's played a lot of basketball through his youth, through his 20th season right now. 
He's seen it all. The Memphis Grizzlies haven't. They're trying to write a story book ending, but they can't finish it. All sequels have finishes that leave little to be desired. But in this sequel, tonight, it's going to be an epic ending. And when it's all said and done, the Memphis Grizzlies will be trying to shy away from the media and run from them. They're not ready for this. They're pushing themselves that much further to the brink of elimination. LeBron feels their edge and their energy. That's a dangerous side right there. I would not want to be on the Memphis Grizzlies tonight. I would not want to be out there with them when LeBron starts attacking. You better be ready. Because the lion never settles. He he may not be the fastest, nor the strongest, but his tenacious attitude will give will will take him further than any place in the jungle. When the lion roars, you better get out the way, because tonight a lion is on the prey. Memphis Grizzlies, you have been warned. Now, before we get up out of here, two more sec, two more topics. Game six preview, I touched on a little bit earlier. Eliminating the turnovers, that's number one. Try to eliminate as many three-pointers as we can on our end. If the shots are not falling, be aggressive, get to the rim. Keep the Memphis Grizzlies from getting hot. We've got to stop them. we got to put bodies in front of them. That's the only way we're going to win this game tonight. Physicality. Defense. Figure out how to slow down Desmond Bain. Take Desmond Bain out of the mix. You force Jaw to be, play erratic. Because he's going to get to the rim. We have to meet him at the rim. We have to play physical with this team. Dylan the villain Brooks. I think this is the night that he's going to chirp his way into an ejection. I wouldn't be surprised. It's going to be a very tense game. It will be very tense. Each possession is going to just going to feel like uh, that possession is going to come back and either make or break this game. We have to be mentally locked in. We've got to be mentally there. When the going gets tough, you got to keep clawing. I need my role players to step up. Dennis the Menace, Malik Beasley, Troy Brown Jr., Vando. Can we get Lonnie Walker on the court for some meaningful minutes? Can we do that? Please? D'Lo, I need you to be aggressive, but I don't need you jacking up a whole bunch of threes. Let's finish this series tonight. I do not want to see a game seven on Sunday. I honestly don't. But I'll have my mind made up after tonight. If there's going to be a game seven, there will probably, excuse me, there will probably be a show sometime over the weekend and before the game tips off on Sunday. It is going to be entertaining. The Crypto.com Arena is going to be loud. The energy is going to be very high. This is our Game 7. This is our Game 7 tonight. Lakers, please close the book on this series tonight. Let's do this. All hands on deck. Before we end the show... Whenever you listen to my show, I am very adamant and and advocate for mental health. As someone who is a recovering patient, if you know somebody who needs therapy or needs help or treatments, please seek treatments 
with your counselors, your therapists, or see your primary um, physician, your primary care physician. There we go. I want you all to know that it's okay to not be okay. Always know that you are loved and you're valued and appreciated. Be kind to one another. Always know that it's okay to say that you need to go to therapy. Always know that we're not perfect. It's okay to break down and cry. We all have those meltdowns. I've had one recently. I'm not, and I'm not ashamed of admitting that. It takes a lot for me to break. But doing these podcasts for you all, Laker Nation, it's a safe space for me. It really is. I love what I do. I can be overwhelmed at times. And there's times I just have to decompress. But I know with the NBA playoffs up and running, some it's it's been some entertaining games. But at the same time, you gotta take that one moment to just breathe and let yourself know it's gonna be okay. My anxiety's been a little on edge the last couple of days. I had a episode a couple of days ago and I, it was it was unbearable. I had to remind myself sometimes that I'm not Superman or Batman. A lot of people demand a lot out of me. And then sometimes I put more on my plate than what I can handle. As you go through today on this Friday morning, remind yourself. And look at yourself in the mirror and say, you are loved. I am loved. I am valued and appreciated. I am the master and capable of anything that I put my hands on. I can do anything in my will. For it is not easy for all of us to admit that we're struggling. It's not. That's why I say if you know someone who is anxious, depressed, suicidal, please seek help. You don't have to, you're not in this battle alone. I wear a wristband every day that's black and green and with the colors of mental health on it. It's a reminder of where I've been and the possibilities of breaking the stigma of mental health. It's not easy, and it's still an ongoing battle. There's days you feel good. There's days that you feel bad. But nevertheless, if God woke you up this morning, that's a blessing. To open your eyes and your feet hit the floor, it's a blessing. Life may not be perfect, nor is it pretty. But each day is another opportunity to create a better haven for yourself. Regardless of what you're going through in your personal life, relationship, marriages, whatever the case may be, always take time to decompress. Take time out to say a prayer. We all need prayer, regardless of where we're at and what we're doing in our lives. A healthy body can't function without a, a strong mind. We all need to take time out to do what we need to do in order to make sure we're in a safe space. That is all the time I have for today's show. Be sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe to The Grid right here on your podcasting app. Be sure to like, share, comment, 
on our content creators pages and our apps be sure to check us out on youtube as well be sure that you are tapped into the grid a lot of great content creators over there a lot of great stuff i'm telling you if you have not subscribed please do you can't say that i didn't tell you ahead of time be sure to be continue to stay safe take care of your mental physical emotional intimate and spiritual health be sure that you tell somebody today that you love them like your nation you know the vibes have a great weekend have a great time at the game be safe tonight wherever you may be watching the game at your local bar sports bar restaurant please stay safe enjoy yourself have fun enjoy being around your friends and family and your loved ones tomorrow's not promised you have to do everything you can to make sure you're in a safe space. I love y'all. Have a beautiful weekend. Continue to support the content on the grid. Make sure you check us out on all the social media platforms at Grid Network on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure that you check out the webpage as well. We got the clothing merch and we have blogs on the grid webpage. Be sure to go check that out. A lot of great stuff over there as well that's done behind the scenes. I'm out of here for the weekend. I love y'all. Go Lakers. Let's end this series tonight. One love from yours truly. Patrick L. Brown. Peace out.